the interview that everyone has been waiting to see won't be aired because Sony collapsed like a house of cards in the face of tyrants. We'll talk about it today. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked. Those who uphold the law resist them. Welcome to the Voice of Resistance. Here's your host, Randall Terry. Welcome to the program, friend. I hope that your Advent season and your preparations for Christmas are going well. May God bless you. May God bless those you love. And I, I, I pray for you that you have a chance or multiple chances to just focus on the coming of Christ. There is so much going on around us. The, the speed of information, the, the horror of some of the, the violence in the world, it, it can be really demoralizing. But Emmanuel, God is with us, the mighty God, the wonderful counselor, the everlasting Father, He's here. He came and the, of the increase of His government and peace there will be no end. The gates of hell will not prevail against his church. There's a lot of battle. There's a lot to grieve over. But there is a lot to rejoice in. And we can have the narrative of joy because God has come amongst us. And he became one of us. And he died for us. So, I hope that you have a lovely Christmas. Um, I, I want to come at this Sony movie thing from a bunch of angles, which is my pattern. I hope that you are provoked in your thinking and hope that I add something to the narrative for you to talk about with your friends. And by the way, we always love hearing from people. You want to email us, please feel free. And a lot of times we'll take the emails and we'll use them for segments on the show. So there's your email address if you want to contact us with any questions or comments that you have about this show or any other show or something you'd like me to cover. All right. Seth Rogen and his comedic genius buddies, uh, comedic genius by many counts, some of their stuff is really good, some of it's not so good. Um, anyway, they, they made a movie, The Interview, and this huge hacking that happened to Sony appears to be connected to North Korea. No one knows for sure. They're so sophisticated in what they've done. P people just don't know how they've pulled it off. But they have pulled it off. And they said that there will be terrorist, 9-11-like terror attacks on any movie theaters that air the interview. Now, in case you don't know, the interview was a, is and was a comedy about two men who go to North Korea to interview the dictator of North Korea. But they've been given instructions. This is my understanding. They've been given instructions to assassinate him. All right? So this is a comedy about assassinating the leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un. So they created this film. In fact, let's, let's play a clip of it. It was going to be a comedy, and it's about killing Kim Jong-un. Here it is. You are entering into the most dangerous country on earth. Kim Jong-un's people believe anything he tells them, including that he can speak to dolphins or he doesn't urinate and defecate. Oh, oh, oh. you tell me my man doesn't pee or poo? Everybody pees and poos. Where would he go otherwise he'd explode? But he does talk to dolphins. All right, so um, <laughs> obviously it's a little bit crass. Uh, it's vintage Seth Rogen humor would be my guess. People were looking forward to seeing it. I don't get to see movies much these days, but um, now no one's going to get to see it. Sony collapsed. They withdrew the movie. They pulled the movie. So I want, I want to talk about that from a, a number of levels. <clears throat> and I, I need to be a little bit careful because it's not my house that's threatening to be bombed. Just, just remember that. We need to walk softly 
it's easy for us to prognosticate, oh, they should stand up for the First Amendment. They should have guts. They should be brave and courageous. Okay. Well, if you owned the movie theater and you got a message that said, if you air that film, we will burn your theater to the ground, would you have second thoughts? <laughs> so I, I want to be gracious and be gentle. I've had death threats, all right? I've had the police come to me or the FBI come to me and warn me. And it's just, you know, it's, it's a sobering thing. So I, I give you that as backdrop, but I still feel the need to speak clearly and to, to call it as I see it, to call balls and strikes. Our media elite and our Hollywood elite prance around and, and strut around and front themselves as if they were the great guardians of freedom, the great wisdom uh, endowed leaders who are going to show us a more enlightened path, that are going to set us free from the shackles of our past. But they do it in a safe haven. It's, there's, there's no cost. In fact, they make a profit doing it. They actually make money mocking, belittling, using, using people. So this to me is really sad, but I, I, I'm going to take a break. I want you to think of the last time that people in the communications industry folded like a house of cards and did not defend the First Amendment through their practice. Think during this break. I'll be right back. You have two choices. I mean, you can try to raise your children by design or you will raise them by default. There are no perfect parents. We're going to get it wrong sometimes. If we have a plan, we've got a better chance of getting it right in the long run. There is something deep within the heart of every human being that longs for parental acceptance and approval. When does a boy become a man? Get a group of guys around and ask them that question. I don't think there's a certain age. Some men stay boys their whole life. I would say, uh, what? 16, 18 years old. Wow, that's a good question. When they get bar mitzvah? Well, I think when he has a child. So I just became at 56, yeah, 56 years old. Without the power of the Holy Spirit changing us and giving us power over our sin, we can't hope to be the dads that our kids need us to be. So when was the last time that the arch defenders of the First Amendment, the ones who also make a massive profit, financial profit off the First Amendment, when was the last time that you remember them caving in in a real significant, timely battle? I'm thinking of one in particular. I, I might be wrong on the timeline, but the one I'm thinking of is this. The cartoons, the Dutch cartoon crisis, I believe it was the Dutch. Might have. Uh, there were several countries. The, the French got in big trouble over it. I think the Belgians got in big trouble over it. Uh, Belgians, rather. I think that um, there, my memory is that the New York Times, CBS, the, New, the Washington Post, that they all refused to show the cartoons that had caused this crisis all over Europe and in certain Muslim countries because they were afraid. Now, if these cartoons, these, these single images, can cause Muslims to riot, to set fire to an embassy, to call for the death, the murder, the assassination of the cartoonists, in these foreign lands, wouldn't you think that it would be in the interest of the First Amendment to fly right in the face of it? I mean, imagine, if, for those of you who are students of World War II, you will remember that there was a lot of satire that went on from the Three Stooges to singers and songwriters. Heil, pfft, heil, pfft, right in the Fuhrer's face. The Three Stooges mocking Hitler. 
It was a part of morale, all right? Can you imagine if Hitler said, hey, you better not do this or I'm going to sink your ships. He already was sinking their ships. It was part of our ability intellectually and psychologically to go to war and to stay at war with these people was to have some comic relief, was to have contempt for our enemies. And if, they, if we found out that something bothered them, well, as the age old adage goes, find out what irritates them and do only that. <laughs> so that was the stuff that we were made of. We ran political cartoons throughout the American Revolution. At different key moments in, say, the battle to, uh, to end child labor, they ran horribly insulting political cartoons against really wealthy people, showing them eating children. But our leaders in the media caved in with the cartoon crisis. And Sony's caving in right now. And so I, I, part of me thinks that they really are defenders of the First Amendment, but part of me thinks they're more like pimps. They're prostituting something. And if the police are coming for a raid, right, the pimps are going to run. The pimps are going to do what they have to do to not get caught and not be convicted. It's not that they're committed to their fiefdom of pimping against all costs. No, it's, it's an immoral business. It's a criminal enterprise. And they'll back down when they need to. I, I, I get the feeling that, that Sony and other people in the media world, that they're, they're just pimps and prostitutes. They're making a buck. And if they can make a buck mocking Christianity, man, they will do it. If they can make a buck mocking Kim Jong-un, they'll do it until they get their computers hacked until they get some threats. Now, let's, let's be honest. Does anybody believe with the ongoing war that we have with Islam, with Islamic fundamentalists, with devout followers of Muhammad's false religion, can anyone really believe that if they had assets in this country since 9-11, that they would not have used them? I mean, think about it. We have had some horrific lone wolf attacks by people who were simply had some demonic conversion, but if, if Al-Qaeda had assets on the ground, if ISIS had assets on the ground, do we really think they would not have used them? Of course they would have. Well, who in their right mind can think that North Korea has assets in America to blow up movie theaters? Th I mean, think about it. Think about it. Who in their right mind would believe that the assets exist in America to for the North Koreans to send the signal, pull the trigger, and blow up movie theaters in America. I'm not buying. I'll be right back. We'll look at this uh, as a political question regarding, is it funny to make a film concerning assassinating uh, the leader of a sovereign country? Don't go away. Do you want to get America out of the hands of wicked and unjust men and women who are destroying the republic before our eyes and put leadership back into the hands of righteous men and women so that we don't die as a nation? Well, you're talking about social revolution and there are rules in social revolution. We can look at the victorious social revolutions of the past, such as the end of slavery, the end of child labor, women's voting rights, the end of segregation, and so much more, and learn from their victories. Look at their actions, their images, their rhetoric, their sacrifices, and their final fruit. We will send you this series that originally cost $129, seven books for students, one teacher's guide, 
if you'll give a gift of any size and just pay for shipping and handling. Take advantage of it today. For those of you who wonder just how crazy and vile Kim Jong-un is, in case you forgot, he actually had some family members who fell into his disfavor, fed to wild, or rather to emaciated attack dogs. So they starved the dogs for a number of days and then threw, my memory is five people in with the dogs who ate them tore them to shreds and ate them. There was not anything left of these human beings. That is the kind of pig that Kim Jong-un is. He's a, he's a vile, despicable, demonized dictator who deserves to be taken out. He really does. Study just war. Study Augustine. Study the history in the scriptures and in history of wicked, evil tyrants being taken out in the pursuit of justice. But I digress. The, the question is, or has been asked, well, what if a nation allowed a film to be made, or a nation made a film about killing our president, or killing the leader of England? Well, first of all, they tried to, the, the Muslims tried to kill uh, the elder Bush, George H.W. Bush. They, they tried to kill him in Iraq, if my memory is correct. Saddam had an assassination plot. And, and a lot of these movies that are made by terrorists showing heads being decapitated or trying to inspire people to attack the great Satan, showing pictures of our president, of our leaders, you know, every time they kill an American, they're killing a member of the ruling class. Think about that. We the people. We elect our government. We're a free people, and we, we, we get to have representative government. Even though it's doing pretty miserably right now, and we've gotten the president we deserve, every time they kill an American, it's an assault on the presidency because we're the ones who elect the president. He's one of us. Do you understand? Kim Jong-un is not an elected official. He came to power because he was the son of the former murderous dictator, and he has left a trail of blood everywhere he goes. I can only bet that Seth Rogen and these guys <laughs> based a lot of this movie on um, that basketball player who used to play for the Chicago Bulls, Dennis Rodman. I can only think that this is, a lot of this has to do with Dennis Rodman going over there and having fun and drinking and carrying on with Kim Jong-un. But again, I digress. It's not the same to say, what if another country made a movie showing an, uh, whether, even in jest, uh, trying to kill an American president or to um, kill the leader of England. Listen, films are made all the time in America about the White House coming under attack, about the president's life being in jeopardy. Have you ever heard of 24, the TV series? There were, there were presidents in America in that series that were killed. And I, I know that it's not a comedy, and I know that it's inside. It's, I know that it doesn't exactly line up. But, but the point is, is that the, the American government didn't make this film. This film came out of Hollywood. It's a comedy. I mean, it's a comedy. It just is. And from the previews that I saw, it looks to me like they're not going to take him out. I could be wrong. I'm, I'm going to leave this last thought for this segment. Mitt Romney. I cannot believe that I'm indebted to Mitt Romney for anything. But a broken clock is right twice a day. Mitt Romney came out and said, what Sony ought to do is to release it online. Say for five bucks a pop. I don't know if he put a number on it, but he might have said put it out there for free. The point is, if Sony wants to at least have a little bit of courage... They could put it online, tell everyone, here, for five bucks, download it, or I'll give, we'll give it to you for free. We'll let you see. I mean, they've already gotten more free publicity than most movies in the history of the human race. I want you to think about that. As long as movies have been made, every once in a while a movie will come along and there'll be some press coverage over it, you know, like the one about Moses or the one about Noah. And, man, this one is getting some serious press coverage. 
I, there are a lot of people that would pay five bucks to, to watch it online just to see what all the fuss is about. And then they wouldn't be jeopardizing anybody's movie theater. That would be a way for them to have their cake and eat it too. I'm going to make one more comment about that when I come back, but I have to take a break. Be right back. I have been a leader in the pro-life movement for 30 years, and sadly we have not prevailed in our goal to make it a criminal act to kill an unborn baby. There's reasons why we have failed. I wrote this book, a humble plea, to Catholic bishops, to evangelical clergy, and to lay people explaining where we went wrong and what we have to do to prevail. We've made this available as a PDF online for free. I encourage you to go and download your own copy. We have put together what we call an online university for you. Now that's a highfalutin way of saying that we have a pretty significant library of material, books, tapes, videos, that are there for you for free. Why are we doing this? Because America is desperate for new leaders and because this material could help you to become the leader that you and God want you to be. Check it out and enjoy it. If you were a Chinese dissident, or I was a Chinese dissident, and I wanted to make a short film and put it out, or wanted to have a blog and put it out, I would know that I was risking my life. And so I might be tempted to not try and air it in a theater. I might be tempted to try and put it online, right? To get it out there, but maybe under a pseudonym. And I understand that, justly so. There have been a lot of highly charged political documents written in the course of human events that were penned by who knows who because there was a pseudonym given. But that's the kind of stuff you do when you're the, the victim. When you're really weak and you're really in danger of the strong harming you and taking you out. Sony is not the weak. We're still the strongest military country in the world even though we're in a horrible decline on so many fronts, Sony could give this, Sony could have the role of the beleaguered blogger in China by just putting it online and saying, here, we made this and movie chains, uh, theater chains are saying they won't air it because they're afraid, but we're not afraid and we're going to make this available to the American public and here you go. I mean, what's North Korea going to do? bomb the Sony building? I just don't think so. I just don't think so. Mm -mm. I mean, people have been calling Kim Jong-un names for as long as he's been in power. They mock him. They vilify him because he's mockable and he's a villain. He deserves to be vilified. So Sony's posture in this, if they don't release it at some level, is that of the coward. It really is. It's that of the coward. You'll stand like a pimp and peddle wares that mock and vilify all kinds of people who won't stand up to you or threaten you. But when someone threatens you or you get afraid, then you back down. So let's see. And again, it's not my theater that's being threatened. And, I, and Sony might have been in the position where they just thought, you know what, they're all going to pull out. So let's just do, let's preemptively pull the trigger and pull this and then figure out what to do. Maybe it'll go straight to DVD. Maybe it'll go online and people can see it. I'm sure we haven't heard the last from Sony on this, and I'm sure that if they don't try and release it right away, there are people that have the movie in the can. They've got 35 millimeter copies of it right now. <laughs> I promise you. Somebody is gonna make a bootleg copy. Maybe even before this show airs, a bootleg copy is gonna show up online and people are, in fact, going to be able to watch the movie that has North Korean hackers going for Sony's throat. God bless you. I'll talk to you tomorrow.